Hi everyone, welcome back to our short video series focusing on capital planning. This video we're going to be covering part two where Rachel, again our healthcare consultant here at Dude Solutions, will be covering managing your assets and reporting through the lens of capital planning. So Rachel, I'll turn it over to you. Great, thanks McKinley. Welcome back everyone. Looking forward to continuing on with the second part of this two-part series. So in this video, we're gonna be talking a lot about asset management, how to capture your capital planning assessments, and then lastly, we'll be getting into what we call the replacement schedule report, uh, which is gonna be that forecasting report available to you through our capital planning module. So getting into managing your assets. So first up, just wanted to do a little bit of a review for those of you that may have listened to the first video or if you didn't get a chance to listen to the first video, one of the things that we discussed was what types of assets do you want to capture? So some high level things to consider here are assets that potentially fall under your capital budget versus your operations budget. For capital planning purposes, we do want to focus on those items that are falling under the capital budget umbrella. So typically you're setting some sort of dollar amount threshold. Different collection strategies. So obviously with a main focus on being an FCA is something that can be very valuable, not only with the information that it's going to provide you, uh, but it's also going to be an accurate and fast way to expedite that collection process. Um, but some of the things that we'll also look at in the system is how you can add assets yourself and what types of information you'll need to add. So in order to activate the capital planning features, there's three main pieces of information that you'll want to focus on, and that is knowing your original purchase date, purchase cost, and estimated lifespan. And the last thing I'll leave you with in regard to managing your assets is making sure that you're also keeping up with the status of your assets. So when new equipment comes on board, it's going into our system with the status of in-service. But on down the road, as we replace things, it's gonna be important to make sure that you're going in and retiring the appropriate assets or potentially listing items as out of service. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop directly into the product here and we'll take a look at some of those things. So what I have here up on my screen is an example of a new asset profile. And this is the screen that you would be taken to if you came up here in the upper right hand corner and clicked on your blue add button. So this is where you can go to add just about everything into the system. And in this list, there is gonna be an option here for fixed assets. So when you click on add fixed asset, it's gonna bring you here to the general profile information card where you're filling out information like the location. So where does that particular piece of equipment live? The asset description. So making sure that those asset names are unique. So it's usually a, a combination of what type of asset it is, some sort of building descriptor and an additional unique identifying factor. If you know information like the model number, serial, manufacturer, purchase supplier, you would be able to fill in that information. And you're also gonna be assigning it a category and a subcategory. So then last but not least, what we wanna make sure we do is fill in our purchase date, our purchase cost, and our estimated lifespan. So for my purchase date, we're gonna pretend here that I bought this on May 1st, or May, we'll say, oops, got too many characters here. May 12th, 2008. My purchase cost was $15,000, and my estimated lifespan is 20 years. So once we know all that information and we have it entered down here at the bottom, we're gonna save our information. As soon as you save, a couple of key things have happened here. The first thing to note is up here in the upper right hand corner, you'll see here that your asset has a status of in service. When you click on that status indicator, a short drop down will appear. And this is where you can potentially move your assets in the future to a status of out of service. 
So maybe it's a piece of equipment that you have in storage and it is a, a backup that you use if something is broken down. So you still want to be able to track and report on those pieces of equipment, uh, but you want to be able to, you know, get a list of all of your out of service equipment at any given time. And your other option is retired. So instead of actually truly going into the system and deleting your equipment when you replace it, you're coming in and retiring it. So this is what is going to give it that status of retired, but you're always still going to have a record of all of your previous asset history. So now that our asset is saved and we did have that original purchase information captured, you'll also notice that down here towards the bottom in our additional gray panels of information, the first one here is capital planning. So when we open up our capital planning panel, you'll see here that because of my original purchase information, it activated our capital planning features. So it went ahead and inserted the original assessment for me and it started to tell the story of my replacement forecast. So next up, keeping up with our assessments. So when it comes to assessing your equipment, one question to ask yourself is how often are you going to be assessing your equipment? So typically this is going to be a combination of technical audits that your maintenance team will be doing uh, maybe as they touch that piece of equipment either through a PM um, you know, or as they're checking out that piece of equipment maybe something was going on with it or you're setting yourself up on some sort of schedule where you're doing those yearly midterm adjustments. So not only are you going to be able to assess your assets on an individual, abasement, individual basis, there is also going to be the option to batch assess your equipment. Um, so this is going to make that process go a little bit faster if you have groups of equipment with similar replacement schedules. And so also when it comes to assessing your equipment, we want you to use the knowledge of your maintenance staff and vendors to retrieve this information. So hopping back into the product, we're gonna take a look at how you capture those assessments. So we'll, we're still here on the same piece of equipment that we entered down here in our capital planning panel. Up here at the top is gonna to be the assessment table. So we originally purchased this back in 2008 and we're gonna put in an assessment for today. You'll also be able to choose who it was assessed by which is going to be a list of all of your users within the system. And so this is typically where you would be choosing the maintenance staff who performed the assessment. Then you're going to give your reason. So going back to, you know, is it a technical audit that you're doing? Is it a midterm adjustment? So that's what we'll go ahead and classify this one. You're going to assess the condition. So your options here are gonna be something to the tune of failed, fair, good, new, like new, or poor. So this one will say we've downgraded it to fair. My replacement cost is 10 years later, probably have to take inflation to account. So I'm gonna bump that replacement cost up a little bit here. And then lastly, out here to the far right, this is where you're gonna be assessing the remaining life. So we'll say this has seven, well, six years remaining life. When we come back out here to the left, you'll notice as you insert this row of information, there's gonna be a little save icon. We wanna go ahead and click that. And what you're gonna to start to see here as you build up those assessments is down here in your replacement forecast, this information is going to update for you. So it's still always gonna retain that original purchase information but now it's reflecting the most recent date from my last assessment, which was today. We have now six years remaining life. And so uh, over here to the right in red, so you're always gonna have a green light or a red light indicator. And that is where the system is gonna tell you, are you forecasting early replacement? Or in some, in some cases, if you've prolonged the life, through proper upkeep, that could potentially be green, which means you're extending your replacement forecast. 
So in this case, we're forecasting early by three years and six months. So that's an example of inputting an individual assessment. One last thing I'll leave you with here in regard to assessment information is how you can do that as a batch. So if we come all the way up here to the top and focus on our navigation icons up here in the upper left-hand corner, when you go into your actions icon, this is gonna take you into your batch editing features. And within this icon, the very first blue sub tab up here at the top is your ability to batch edit assets. So the first thing that we're gonna be doing is selecting which assets we want to edit. So again, if you're batch assessing equipment, um, this is typically equipment that is going to be on the same replacement schedule. So it's usually, you know, if you've installed a group of appliances or a group of PTAC units all at the same time, you're most likely forecasting that it's going to be replaced at the same time as well. So we're going to use our selection tool. And today here, I'm just going to search on we're just gonna assess air landing units. So I'm gonna choose a couple here for example purposes. Once you have all of your assets selected, down here in the bottom right, we're gonna select assets. Then we're gonna tell the system, what information do we actually wanna update? Is it nameplate info, or in this case, it's gonna be a condition assessment. As soon as you change that radio dial, You'll see here it's going to insert a row of information where we're picking up the date, who it was assessed by, the reason, the condition, the cost, and the estimated lifespan, just like we did when we did an individual assessment. So we'll go ahead and choose today's date. It's going to be assessed by Jordan again. Our reason is another midterm adjustment. My condition, still good. Our replacement costs here, We'll put in 10,000, just making up a story here. And our remaining life is going to be 10 more years. So once you have all that information captured, we're gonna click the blue button to batch edit selected assets. And that's what's gonna give you your save confirmation. So as you can see here, instead of individually going into each one of those assets one by one, I was, I was able to enter that information as a batch, can be a big time saver. All right, so last up, getting into our replacement forecast report. So the report title in the WorkSub is actually called Replacement Schedule. And what you're gonna see here when I show you this report is there are going to be three grouping options. So you're gonna have the option to run this report based on asset category, which is gonna give you high level information you can also group it by asset subcategory, which is kind of an intermediate level. You start to get into a little bit more detail. The first two grouping options uh, are gonna be good for mo uh, more so for budgeting purposes. Whereas when you are grouping this report by asset, which is the most detailed information, that is what's really gonna help you all as a maintenance team, let you know the exact assets that you need to replace in a given year. So let's go ahead and hop into the product one last time. We're gonna leave our actions icon and up here in the upper left-hand corner, we're gonna back up into our reports. The replacement schedule is gonna be considered an asset report. So up here in your sub tabs, we're gonna tab over here to assets. And here along the left-hand side, replacement schedule is going to be your second report option. So you'll see here, there are gonna be various filters that you can apply. I'm gonna keep it pretty high level today. I wanna to pull in a lot of information, but one thing to note that will help you in the future is you can filter this report based on location. So if you're only concerned with looking at specific buildings or areas of your community, you can do it by specific groups of assets. So you have your category and subcategory filters there uh, or specific assets in general. So the first one I wanna show you is gonna be by category. 
So when we're looking at the replacement report here by category, you'll see along the left hand side, it's going to have your higher level category buckets, your years are going to be displayed across the top. So if we're looking at the year 2020, I can see that I have a little over $23,000 that I'm going to need to, to budget for, for HVAC items. Well, now I want to get a little bit more detailed and I want to start to look at what within HVAC might I have to replace. So if we look at the report grouped by subcategory, you'll see here along the left hand side, we still have our category buckets. But now in column C, we start to get a little bit more detailed. So in the year 2020, I can see that the two um, buckets here within HVAC is air handling, uh, air handling unit I might have to replace as well as a boiler. Okay, so now as a maintenance team, I might want to know, okay, which air handling unit and which boiler am I actually going to have to replace? So that's where we can run the report for the third time grouped by the asset level. You'll see here the report looks almost the same, um, but when you are in the most detailed version, your columns over here to the left are what are going to look the most different because it is going to pull in the asset description, so the name of your piece of equipment. It's also going to show you the location, which is very important here. It will still pull over that category. And then we can see here in 2020, so the air, it's air handler unit one on our care center roof is the one that we have to replace. And my two rooftop water heaters also in the care center um, are the other two HVAC items that I'm forecasting to replace in 2020. So that's all I've got for today. Thanks again for listening. And I hope everyone is looking forward to exploring opportunities for capital planning and FCAs.